A, are you a PC or console gamer primarily? And if you're a console gamer, would this be exactly what you need to break into PC gaming? Oh. <gasps> All right. So, yeah, if you're a console player, could this could this bring you into PC gaming? Because yeah. a lot of people, they look at the PC gaming, you know, the PC gamer master race, and they get a little intimidated. Is Do this going to be friendly? Are, there, there's people online that are like, and I'll get into it when we actually get to it in the video. Oh, there's the people online that are bashing these prices. What? Dude, for the amount of hardware you're getting, this is underpriced. Yeah. Also, the Purple Dragon has joined us. Welcome, Chris. I didn't know you'd be here. Hello. But yeah, happy. no, uh, kind of moved some things around so I could be in on this because uh, I'm very, yeah, very... I, I, I told Chris about it at work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, we hit 101 subscribers today as well. Thank you. Oh, I all they're of all donations. Yeah, I mean... No, they're, they're all chihuahuas. <laughs> uh, that, that reminds me to, to do this, and I'm probably going to have to re-say it, I'm sure. But thank you to all of our subscribers. You mean the world to us. We know all of you because there aren't that many of you right now. <laughs> but you're growing, and, and we can't tell you what it means. And um, as, you know, as sort of a reward for getting us to that 100, we're working right now on an animation that tells a little bit about the origin story of all the little dragons. Uh, we hope you like it. It'll be coming soon. But right now, we're going to dive into the Steam Deck because this shit looks amazing. Nick, you're the one who's done all the research. So, I mean, why don't you lead us into this, let us know, and then I know we're going to have a lot of questions for you. Too much research, some would say. So, uh, basically, what this thing is, I, I think a lot of people are calling it a portable PC. I think that actually doesn't actually encapsulate what it is this thing is a gaming laptop with a controller built in <laughs> so just to clarify too uh, and and i don't know if a lot of our listeners know this just yet but um i don't know a lot about this but one thing i do know thanks to you nick is um this is not like their other steam device what was it called um the steam link or the yeah, gaming the, pcs this the steam link um because that was <laughs> just kind of a streamable device that connected to a tv and there's a little bit of latency involved in there and it wasn't hot garbage. it was kind of lackluster in my opinion <laughs> yeah, yeah um, it was awful this, so this is nothing like that at all this is like standalone hardware like in your face stuff Right. So how this thing is going to work is after you unbox it and you turn it on, the first thing it's going to ask you for is your Steam login. After you verify your account, it just connects to your library. Oh, period. Shit. You have you have full access to your library. So you can have so like, so all right, for for somebody who has like 2000 games, you know, like us. they're I was just going to say, because there are people like you do. I can't imagine who would have so many games. Oh, <laughs> Humble Bundle. Oh. Yeah. Mm, some Interesting. I haven't played half my library, but <laughs> like I could download. Are they saying that, the you know, without exception, you're going to be able to play anything in your library? Yes, without exception. And actually, when I dive into the actual hardware that's in this thing, this thing's absolutely going to be able to run everything in your Dude, library. It looks like a Switch impressive. that has like cycled in a couple steroid. Yeah, it's like, yeah. That's what I meant. Well, this <laughs> this thing is this thing is a, like hardware wise, it's on par with the Xbox Series X and PS5. Oh my god, so at what point does it go from just being fun in your hands to like melting your fingers from the heat? Like how how do they... Well, actually, let me go to the tech specs because that's... Um, I forgot I'm in the stupid full screen mode. So it's funny you mentioned the heat. There is going to be a fan on top and a fan on the back. So there is, they actually have considered air circulation in the build of this and created two different vents for the heat to come out here and for the fan to force it out through the top uh, so heat well, loud it's gonna be. hopefully isn't an issue I, I it'll probably be no louder than the switch honestly uh, as long as it's not like a PS4 Pro, man. That thing sounded like it was going to yeah, take off like a and jet engine. Me. Yeah, it was terrible. It's like, did I buy a helicopter or a console? 
so I guess before I get into the hardware, um, so this thing will link up to your Steam library, but one feature that they don't actually cover in this very much is cloud saving is going to be enabled. So for me, when I get one of these, I want to play it at work and I want to play like my indie games like Dead Cell or Slay the Spire or Ziggurat. Mm. So oh, having cloud storage for those games isn't going to be as necessary, but I'm also going to be playing things like Nino Kuni or Shin Megami Tensei 3 or RPGs. Oh, and yeah, with perfect. cloud saving, as long as you're connected to the internet, you'll be able to continue where you left off when you get home and connect to your PC. That is pretty awesome. Um, now, speaking of storage and stuff like that, does how much onboard does this have? So that is a very interesting question yeah. because it's one that I had to do research on. Isn't that so, really the most, and I don't mean to interrupt too much, but isn't that really people's most pressing questions right now? Yes, but I have another question that I'll get into after I explain this. So these are the three different pricing models. So you have the 64 gig, 256 gig, and 512 gig. What this is, I initially thought that this was some kind of an SD storage. No. Uh, but actually, if you read it there, it's NVM SSD. Yep. What these things have are the uh, SSDs that are chips that are installed directly to the motherboard. Yeah, and I can tell you, okay. I use... Um, Chris, I urged you to buy one too, didn't I? Um, you, uh, well, there have been a couple people mentioning it, and so I did build it in my last rig. Um, I did put it on there, and I mean, it works great. Um, I've seen very few problems with those. I did have a buddy whose drive crashed on them after about, I'd say, three months, but... Um, that's like a not even a two percent, if I recall correctly. Yeah, um, yeah that's manufacturer defect yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, uh, so you know, I, I honestly I think this is that's a great idea for this. Um, so, but I, on top of this, too. this on top of those different ranges of storage, uh, I'm going to see where I can find the picture. Uh, should be this guy right here. It will actually accept sd cards as well expandable memory yeah so yes. i mean that's that's definitely something people are going to have to it's going to be difficult to explain it to people but like those nvme drives like you can get the standard one that maybe runs like a laptop but then when you run into like the higher level ones um i actually spent quite a bit on mine like windows there is no like trying to get to the BIOS beforehand. Like if you hit the power button, it's at the Windows login screen. I don't even it's, see the damn thing post. Yeah, it, it is the fastest form of solid state drives right now. It is the fastest form of hard drive yeah. media right now. Yeah. Like if you think no, an do, SSD is fast, imagine an SSD right. that has done Uncorrect. coke all day. Yeah, it yeah. takes out. It takes the roadways out from point A to point B, which is really nice. But exactly. I, so I do have kind of a just a color commentary about the expandable memory mm -hmm. i love that idea because yeah. you can keep specific games on there and I'm, i don't know if this has ever happened to you guys but as a kid and i'm gonna say as a kid because like i would act any different now <laughs> um you know if i had a game boy and i brought it to school someone stole the game from me or i dropped it or i broke it or whatever could happen to it even if you lose a card you misplace it it fries whatever you still have your games because it's on steam right. but you don't have to re-download shit and that's just i think that's kind of it's brilliant i don't want to say revolutionary but that is awesome well it's opinion. it's almost it's like, not revolutionary because it, it's no different than adding additional storage to your cell phone or right ryan i know me and you were huge advocates oh. of buying gigantic micro SD cards <laughs> to put into our 3DSs. Right, right. Oh, I had to format it weird, too, just to get it to work, because it was beyond, like, the scope of, of what the 3DS could recognize. I remember that. But one thing that bugs me, even though it is nice that it has this expandable media, uh, one thing that is severely lacking from these three pricing models is that none of these include expanded media. That's one of several things that you're going to have to buy separately. Oh, well, I would assume. I would assume you'd need to buy the, the expand, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, the additional media. Like when I look at this thing, 
it's almost, and like we were saying, it's not revolutionary, but it's like they're taking all the best parts of what you would want if you were building your own, um, you know, indie platform, basically, your, your mobile platform for PC games. Like, to imagine something that small, my, my biggest concern is battery life. Like, is this thing yeah, going to chew through I'm, its batteries in an hour and a half? I'm, I'm actually about to get into that. Before I get into it, I actually want to make some quick physical comparisons to this and the Switch that I was doing research on before we all got together. I was going to say, just keep it PG with the physical comparisons. Well, it's funny you say that because we're about to talk about length. Hmm. Seven. So. Dude, uh, what about girth? I mean, come on. <laughs> actually, you know what's funny? It's funny, uh, it's funny that you actually mentioned girth. The switch is very slightly thicker than this. Holy Ooh. shit, dude! I'm, hold, this thing's gonna be my thin. switch real quick. So I've been playing the hell out of some Mario Golf, and oh my god, this is—it can't be thinner than this. There's no way. Well, well, here's the it thing. It looks it though. But go here's ahead. The, Here's the thing on why it's thinner. It's because the back of it, let me get, the back is concave. Yeah. So that way it's easier to grip. Good. So, it, it, and when I say it's slightly thinner, I do mean like slightly. half an inch. So have you ever, have either of you ever used a steam controller, dear God? Yeah, it was awful. Things are awful. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so why is, is Gabe not able to give up on the fucking touch pads? But two, these buttons on the back, which, oh, they're brilliant. That was the one thing about the Steam yeah. controller I loved, man. And I'm so Those are fully those. programmable, by the way. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. So if you don't want to use them, don't got to use them. Uh, if you want to map something to them, uh, like say you want to map pressing down on the sticks, to those buttons instead you can that's personally what i'm going to do with them yeah they because the switch is not fun if you have some big ass hands like i've got these you know like joke of uh, uh, large hand hands um holding the switch is is a pain in the ass after a while like yeah. it's really not made for it's made for children so oh uh i promised you i would talk about length so <laughs> This thing will be the same oh, wow. height as a switch, but this will actually be inches longer than the How switch. How many? <laughs> All I heard was inches. <laughs> yeah, I Solid think you, you're, you cut out there. Two you're, inches. Oh, two inches. wow. Yeah. So it's, it's roughly the exact same form factor, but it's going to be easier to hold because of the concave nature of the back of it. So you can actually get a good grip on this thing. Also no joy. And you're going to need a good grip on this thing because it weighs half a pound more than the Switch. Oh, Holy damn. Jesus. Well, I mean, the Switch isn't <laughs> like... pumping an iron and playing games, man. That's the, awesome. The, <laughs> the Switch uh, is... 0.9 pounds, so slightly less than one pound. This say, thing clocks in at just under one and a half pounds. Yeah. Dude, you're gonna be like, uh, "Hey, have you been working out?" Nah, been playing a lot of games. <laughs> so, and, and just that, run. That, <laughs> that one and a half pound, shit. that one and a half pound thing isn't super important, except for if you expect a child to be handling this thing because mm, they will yeah. drop it. Oh, yeah. Seven hundred bucks? No. No, I'll put the switch in the hey, hands as I walk away hey, with this. Steam has a lot of child-friendly or child-accessible games, yeah. and it's become more and more popular amongst children. So this is going to be a huge hit for kids whose parents can afford it. Yes. And their hands are big enough. Yeah, I mean, they, they, <laughs> the little man hand child. <laughs> like, here you go, hey, freaking nature. Hey. Uh, also, the seven-inch screen is going, to, or seven inches of the screen is going to be a touchpad. <laughs> oh, but wow. the last inch will be black and white. Yes, and angry. Uh, as long so as it's not Radio Shack orange monitor. <laughs> I'm gonna CRT. quickly, I'm yeah. gonna quick, I'm gonna quickly blast through some of the minor features that aren't uh, covered in great detail in here that I think are worth talking about. Sure. So. Uh, battery life, definitely worth talking about. Yeah. Battery life on this thing for consistent play is two to eight hours. Yeah, so two hours on like a AAA title, probably eight if you're playing, you know, something, or I would say maybe even five or six if you're playing something like Hades, really yeah. nice indie, you know? And to, to actually show off, they are playing these. I don't know if these are actually doctored, I don't believe they are. 
Um, so this is Jedi Knight, and if I go over to the developer tab, this is Hades. Oh wow! And just like you're saying, it's beautiful. You know, playing like I was saying, I would use it for something like Dead Cells earlier. Oh, I yeah. can probably get every bit of eight hours out of that. If I want to play Doom Eternal, <laughs> that's probably going to eat up a lot of the battery. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, but you would expect it to, you know, like that. That is a lot to put. So on here's Disco way. Elysium. Oh, such a fantastic game. And then there's like a preview somewhere on here. I think it's on hardware where they're playing Doom Eternal. Here we go. Wow. Yeah. I mean, look at his hands. So, I, yeah, he's really struggling to use. Well, not struggling, but he's using that. I almost wonder if they'll he's, finally get touchpads right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, well, here's here's the thing. I actually appreciate him using Doom Eternal to show off the touchpad because mm-hmm. what he's doing right here is he's using the touchpad as the right stick. Yeah. But he's using yep. the actual left stick for movement. Yep. That's always the hardest part about those those thumb pads is that like when you have, you know, that analog stick. Yeah, I'm like Helen Keller with a machine gun trying to use them. I, I'm terrible at aiming, but the thing is. I always know where the zero point is going to be. And when you hit those touch pads, it like always seemed to, you know, move your right mouse a little bit in a weird direction you weren't uh, considering going. Yeah. That's a really also, the, the reason why I say uh, two to eight hours of consistent play <laughs> is this will have a rest mode similar to the Switch, PSP, PS Vita, something you're accustomed to where you can uh, put it in rest mode. So it will actually have that feature. Um, was, so gameplay may vary based yeah, on that. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was trying to catch you before I saw it happen again. But it almost, I don't know if it was us lagging, but for a second I could see this thing really chug as it as he was like jumping off a cliff no that was that was definitely probably on my end because it looks fine on my end yeah and i can't imagine them putting in you know like a a piece where because you know that pc gamers are all about the frames per second yeah and they're gonna Um, look for that kind of stuff and speaking of performance, I'll go ahead and quickly gloss over that. So <laughs> this thing is going to have 16 gigs of laptop DDR5 RAM. Oh, shit. Did they it's the going the megahertz count on it? Sorry. Uh, sh- I didn't note the megahertz. Because <laughs> that's going to be kind of important. If it's, I would assume it's at least 3,100 um, or 3,133. Yeah. Dude, I haven't looked at RAM in so long. RAM, it is uh, 5,500. So pretty good. Pretty damn good. Fuck me. Are mm-hmm. you kidding? Pretty damn good. Uh, also, I... Oh, wait, that's the number of channels. Well, that... No, that's the 32-bit channels. The actual transfer rate is 5,500. That's such a weird designation. But Jesus Christ, yeah. that's fast. So <laughs> I, I don't want to get into great detail because there's a ton of people that aren't going to know what those numbers mean, but they do know that 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, even if it is laptop RAM, is the highest that you can get right now. Yeah, let's for just gaming pieces. say that to people. Like, if you don't understand it, that that is fucking flying. That is so yes. fast. Um, if it doesn't now, run into burn-in issues, then, then that's amazing. The CPU and GPU, the graphics card and the processor, um, those are what are most impressive to me. So the processor that's going to be inside this thing, there aren't official benchmarks for this. It's an 8th processor. That's weird. So here's a really interesting thing. There's no benchmarks for this, but back in 2019, around May 2019, a leak from AMD for a product called the Zen 2 was released. And the benchmarks from 2019 for that unreleased Zen 2 product was comparable to a current graphics card in the 81 percentile. Yeah, well, the Zen 2, they originally thought that that was going to be, I believe what they, they originally thought that that was going to be, you know, the PS5 when they leaked that. I remember that being a big, um, they were doing a lot of videos on it at the time. But yeah. four core, eight thread, it's not like that's bad by any means because it also depends, 
you know, you're going up to three and a half gigahertz on on a mobile platform. That's still you're flying. I mean, that's one of the best mobile processors that you could get for a laptop. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to compare it to a desktop processor, that's where you're going to be like, oh, it's not that great. But you need to remember this thing is tiny. It's also they, well, this thing's not it's running integrated, right? Well, this it's all integrated. That's yeah, why earlier I said people are saying that this is a handheld desktop. It's more fair to say this is a laptop because this is literally using integrated laptop hardware. Yeah, and and also anytime you're using an APU, you're either in console or laptop territory. I mean, if you buy yes. an APU, Chris, I think we both actually ran APUs at one point. Um, those mm -hmm. old AMD like A10. Um, which were good. They were they were good for what they were, but oh yeah, you know there are desktop processors that are going to make that look ridiculous. It's just that you have to keep things in perspective for what you're there's, using this for. That is an amazing setup. There's there oh, yeah. is no handheld device, cell phone, gaming device, or otherwise that has that level of processing power right now. That right. isn't custom made. Yeah, that thing. I, I'm wondering if any of it is going to be replaceable. Like, I I don't think doubt they it. said that none of it's it. going to be upgradable, right? Except for. Um, so they haven't said anything about that, but I'm okay. going to tell you right now. It won't be. It's not. It's going to be no different than the Switch. That bitch is going to be locked in there. It's it's all integrated onto the board. Yeah. Also, I don't think AMD wants people poking around, except for the people who are obviously going to tear it apart on purpose, yeah. like at a you know professional level. They don't want regular people in their home taking this thing apart, fucking it up. It's going to be what, like seven hundred dollar uh, machine on the high end. I think the low, yeah. the entry model was what four hundred. Yeah. But look, just from me, I would, if anybody's looking at that lower end model, I would say bump it up one. You need. To well, here, here's the thing. All three of those models are the exact same hardware. The difference is hard drive space and what comes with it. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just hard drive space. It's the speed of that internal hard drive. And when you go up to the mid range instead of the low end, you're running a considerably faster internal well, all, storage system. All three of them are running the same clock speed. It's just a matter of actual storage space. Well, it's not entirely true. Um, Unless you've done, you, you know, you did the research, so I'll defer to you. They're they're all the same clock speed. That's just a difference in storage size. Okay. Like they all have the same transfer rate. Well. Um, okay. All right. Now the the GPU is what I find most impressive. Uh, the eight RDNA. What that is? That is the exact same processor that is inside of the Xbox Series X and PS5. That's nice. I did know. I didn't notice that at first, but yeah. Is so, it, um, is it really identical though? It is literally the same integrated GPU. Jesus, how did they manage to keep the price? Well, no, how did they manage to keep the price so low? That's insane. They've got to be losing money on at least the low end. So that's the thing that I find most interesting is that a lot of people have been saying that these prices are very, very high. And I will agree, at face value, they look incredibly high. No. But when you break down what this thing is actually giving you, uh, the ability to play games off of your Steam profile is huge for a lot of people, especially folks like us with over a thousand games in our library. Yeah. But the actual hardware that's in this Honestly, it's better than some components of my desktop. Yeah, I was going to say, there are parts of my desktop that would be more expensive to replace than simply buying this. Yeah. And also, uh, not, not good to luck getting not a to GPU say, right now, you know? Yeah, not, not to say that I would prefer this over my desktop, but no. I would prefer this over an OLED switch. Mm, oh, for sure. Uh, I'm so... I, I don't want to say that I'm like angry about that but i just so unimpressed by the choices for their upgrades for them yeah and everything so, about this i like i do want to know like you know the button at the bottom right that's just period 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 um i'm just curious what that does it's i'm not sure i use that all the uh, time when i'm testing. that that may actually be a pause button whereas the menu button at the top is something else i'm not really sure yeah. but i'm going to quickly go through 
I'm going to quickly go through little features that I think are worth talking about and then I'll move on Before to... Before you do that, I just want to cover... <laughs> sorry, one thing. I like the buttons being closer to the, the edge. Where your hands would naturally be gripping. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I have big hands, and I'm still sick of like moving my thumb so far to get to those on on different devices or different controllers. Yeah, so uh, the battery life is a little short. I mean, it's going to be because of how much stuff it's going to be handling. But one really nice thing is on the physical device itself is going to be a USB-C port, which will be used for charging as well as connecting other peripherals. <laughs> Have they uh, said anything about wireless charging? Uh, they have not, but it is Bluetooth compatible. Yeah, I'm curious just because, you know, like my my phone charges faster wireless charging if it has the right setup. Um, and Chris, yours probably does too, right? Does what? Like my phone. <laughs> Stop playing Outbreak. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not actually <laughs> playing. Someone messaged me just as we were talking about that, and I'm like... Reading it was it was a meme. It was about putting watermelon or putting mustard on watermelon. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> that, well, I was distracted for a second, so I, I was, definitely missed what you just said. I was just messing with you, but I was saying like my phone, um, and like for anybody listening, it's just a newer Samsung, right? I, if you buy like a fast uh, wireless charging pad, like a newer uh, generation one, it actually manages to charge my phone faster than a USB C. Oh, wow. It's done in like 20 minutes, all the way from nothing. And it lasts for like a day and a half, two days. Um, hmm. That's the one thing I, I love about this phone. So I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to have anything like that. I kind of doubt it. I think of their own creation, doubt it. Yeah. Oh, will cool. will it happen to be compatible with those? Uh, we'd have to wait and see. It, it takes a lot to, to create that setup. It, it's actually the... From what I know, it's the battery itself that has to be different. So if they don't yeah. have it like that from the beginning, I, I don't see it. But still, a USB-C is going to mean it, it could not only charge much faster, but if you're going directly from, say, not like a computer USB to USB-C, but if you're going directly to a charging block, I'm guessing that that thing can charge pretty quickly through that connection. Which actually, uh, if you kind of see in the back here, it does come oh. with a um, wall, that. yeah, a wall charger. Uh, so that will be nice. Uh, being able to connect uh, other devices via Bluetooth or USB-C is also nice, like controllers or in my case, if I want to play this thing at work, I would like to connect my Bluetooth headphones to it and it absolutely will allow that. That's fantastic. Have they yeah. mentioned um, wireless capability? Like, is it going to be able to utilize 5G or is it going to... I mean, not that that's terribly important, I guess, outside of, you know, uh, if you stream a lot or um, you've got it. Where is it? It just says that it okay. uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's something that they probably... I doubt they'll really talk too much. You mean actually putting in a set, like a cellular reception to it? Yeah. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was saying, like, you know how some some devices, especially like tablets, will have, you know, the Wi-Fi only model at the bottom, and then you'll have, like, one up, or you'll have the locked versions from various carriers that have um, actual Wi-Fi capabilities. So I'm just... I, th I think for a device like this, it would be overkill and kind of useless for majority of its audience. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you're right. It's... Well, at least in the U.S. I can see how, yeah. like in, in maybe in Europe, um, you know, they they ride the bus, they ride the train a lot more than we do. Uh, whether or not they would actually use that is, is obviously anyone's guess. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the two last things, or I guess three last things, uh, this, it is going to have a headphone. Uh, so fuck you, Apple, for thinking that's a good idea to remove that. <laughs> and you uh, will. Samsung. Yeah, you. Oh, yeah. Samsung did, too. This will have a headphone jack. Thank God. <laughs> because, <laughs> duh. I don't know. Oh, God. I do know why they did it, but it makes me angry because I have really good headphones that are studio headphones that I can't even use, like, with my switch or my yeah. phone. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, one 
quick thing that I really appreciate is the joysticks and actually the D-pad as well are concave, which means you can slide your finger on and through it more easily. Uh, and what I mean by that to anyone that doesn't know is if you have a PS4 controller or even the switch, they are convex where it pushes out. And um, in my situation, my thumb tends to slip off of the sticks because I have big meaty hands <laughs> with them thumbs. being more. <laughs> yeah, w with with the buttons being concave your finger can sink into it and for extended periods of play or playing games that are a bit faster like i intend to play like hades or dead cell or something having something where my thumb is always going to be in the center i have full uh, range of motion over it uh it's going to be great also the edges of the joysticks are notched or i shouldn't say notched but they're like ridged like a tire yeah. almost and that's better just grip. even better for uh grip thumbs. with your thumb <laughs> yeah i actually have uh different sticks for one of my controllers uh the xbox controller i have the sticks yep. that have those concave cups i did the same yeah. instead of the big mushroom shaped things and exactly. i love them once you get used to them, especially like I like the ones, um, the ones I've purchased, and I, I can't remember the name of the brand anymore. It's killing me. Uh, the the right stick, it actually will raise it up about a half an inch. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it way easier for me to play like a first person shooter with mm -hmm. the controller. Like, yeah, you get more precise with it. Exactly. It, it you don't have to move it as far to actually move it further. Um, I really like the positioning of the buttons. It feels like they've done their homework this time. I really hope that they nail it because the steam link and the steam controller that i have yet to throw away i haven't used really since i've unboxed they were so lackluster um that when it came to like maybe considering buying an index last year i was like mm, fuck half-life i'm not doing so that. so that's pretty much all of the notable features and a lot of the uh, so I want to quickly go over things that I already dislike about it and things that are very questionable at best. So this thing will have a dock similar to the Switch's dock okay. sold separately. Oh, dick move. Mm, womp womp. And How much? of that, there is currently no listed price for what that will be. Okay. Yikes. So that could be a deal breaker. If that thing ends up being like 200 bucks... I, I don't think it will be. I think it will be. It may be like a hundred bucks, though. Yeah. I hope it's not. I'm guessing thirty nine ninety nine to sixty nine ninety nine somewhere. So they actually have here. It is here's the actual dock. Here's what it is. You get an onboard Ethernet. Fuck you, Nintendo. Mm -hmm. You get an onboard Ethernet, a USB three, two USB two point HDMI, video port. That's it. That, that that's all this thing actually is. Dude, that's pretty nasty though. A display port even. So you, yeah, you can get your one forty four. Well, this thing can display up to four K. I guess I should have mentioned that this thing can display <laughs> up to four K. Who honestly plays any kind of shit in four K? Like you're not playing competitively. I mean, if you have oh. a four if you have oh, a four K no. monitor. Yeah, no, my buddy today just told me about the new rig he built, and he claims, I, I don't know how true this is, but the dude's very legit. He claims in 4K he can run Rocket League at 600 frames. Yeah, that's fantastic, because your eye can spot about 34 frames the size of your thumb if you hold out your arm, and your brain is what can compensate. So 600 frames... At some point, your brain even goes, what the fuck are you doing? Well, it's rock. Oh, at, yeah. At, well, at that high of a frame rate, you're not doing that for visuals. You're doing that for inputs. So, yeah. like, uh, when I used to play League of Legends, I wouldn't play unless I could play at least 144 frames because that is more inputs that I'm able to get in. 144 is kind of the, the sweet spot. I think Cedric, um, Cedric has a beast of a monitor, and I, I wish he was here so I could ask him, but... Like, he went from 4K back down to full HD, running at, I want to say it was 144. Um, because, like, once you upgrade to 144, like, the difference, like, you'll see it right away. And I would much rather have 
higher frames than 4K. Because I'll tell you, it's like 1080p to 4K. Eh, well, I, I've great. I've never played above 1080, but like a 1080p display. I've never played above 1920 by 1080. But if I can ever get over 100 FPS when I'm playing a game online, I go for it because that's just more inputs that I can get in. It used to be, and I, I'm sure it's changed by now, but 4K, when it was originally kind of introduced, we were all locked to 60 frames. So if you were accustomed to like 144 or 120, um, which was, I think, a lot more common back then, and then you had to go down to 60, it's kind of like playing on your PC all the time, and then suddenly you're at a buddy's house playing on a PS3, and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's jarring. Like, I noticed the difference. So the dock sold separate. I'm not a huge fan of that. I can I can understand why they may do it, but I honestly slap an extra 50 bucks on the already like what a lot of people consider an extremely high price. Like slap 50 bucks on this and include the dock. I don't care. Uh, me personally, yeah, I don't care. Like a, a yeah, bundle that yeah. does that. Yeah, I would, I would support that because I think I would rather have it. The one thing, if you go back to the picture of it, um, hopefully the final product doesn't look like that on the dock because <laughs> the picture they oh. showed, like, I it didn't notice is, it at first because I thought it was an antenna. But if they're trying to say that. Oh, no, it, it, that that was to uh, show where the wire would come down okay. from your I was gonna device. Say. Here we go. That That's that's what it looks like docked. That's pretty sweet, actually. So see, it clips into the USB-C port here and then goes down to the dock over here. And you can run a chat overlay on it. Oh, oh, now yeah. I dig it a lot. Yeah. Like, so I, I, I really like what they're doing with this dock. Uh, I just wish it was included. So. Uh, one thing that we all talked about that is a definite negative with any product that Valve or Steam tries to put out oh, is their unbelievable track record fucking up hardware. <laughs> and also just not supporting it. Like, they, they release it, and when it goes terribly, they're like, that wasn't us. Like, you remember the Steam PCs? Oh, no. The yeah. wet fart that they forgot about three months later. Oh my god, I forgot all about those. I forgot they ever even tried that. They were garbage, but that was... Oh god, no, they were garbage. So, one thing that I think this has the leg up on, this has a gimmick that can't be replicated via a desktop. Yeah, um, I mean, with this being right. a... With this being a handheld device, I think that's going to hold a very good place in a lot of people's hearts for buying this. And that's actually a big reason why I want to buy it so I can have a handheld version of my Steam library. Yeah. Um, the problem, the inherent problem with buying the Steam desktop PCs when they release them is for the exuberant price that they wanted for them, oh why would you not just buy a desktop? Yeah, and you're you're selling me a shitty desktop for more than it's worth. That's right, they were meant to be consoles. And that's, speaking of yeah. that, you all remember when Razer was trying to make a computer, uh, it was completely modular and yes. like, really, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I remember that. I was like, like, part of me was looking forward to that mm. and the other part of me was like, not in a million. Right, like how are you gonna make uh, some of these pieces, like, how are you going to make the the North Bridge modular? Like, right. how's that going to work? Yeah, like, like I know not. I mean, well, we're pretty nerdy. Um, we won't get into it now, but yeah, like, it, it just <laughs> it, it blew my mind, and yeah, I was just wondering if it was a fever dream or if that actually happened. My last yeah. question, like. A real question though I see the developers tab and it makes me curious I, I'm glad to see that they'll they'll maybe be releasing like dev kits for it you know early oh, they actually say uh, you can apply for a dev kit here oh wow okay yeah I, just I'm just up. wondering if they're going to try at some point to make exclusives I hope they don't go that bad. so it doesn't seem like it based off of this right here what what they are primarily trying to do is make it to where what they're meaning by no porting required is that this will function with 
any PC game that is on your Steam library. And what they mean by no porting required is you don't need to purchase or download an exclusive version of a game for it to run. You are playing the game. There well, is no separate version or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, they probably mean for the developers that the developers won't have any extra work. As long as it runs on Steam currently, yeah, then they'll well, be able to simply run it through a dev kit that'll process everything. That would be fantastic. Right. So, 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 so that that's actually a good point. So it's on the consumer side of things, what they're saying is don't worry, it will work out of the box. And on the developer side of things, they're saying don't worry if your executable works on Steam, the executable will work on the deck. And that is going to be a killer function. I mean, that that alone will, will really ensure that your entire Steam library, and I don't know how they're going to do it. Also, like... I'm old, I, man. I, I'm old as shit, and I can't read text on a seven-inch screen. It, so, uh, mm. I I think there are going to be little issues like that. They're just kind of inherent. Um, yeah. What I think a lot of that's actually going to come down to developers, where developers are going to need to patch in or consider text scaling. Absolutely, and uh, you know what? That's a good point because if they've made their product uh, capable of 4K, then that should have uh, a completely independent, scalable UI anyway. And if that is the mm -hmm. case, and this thing can utilize that, where the developer can very quickly make micro adjustments, even to individual HUD elements or, or UI elements, then wow, oh, that uh, is amazing. One, one quick thing to mention before I forget it is obviously there are games that PC and mouse only, or games that don't have controller setups on Steam. Uh, like Oblivion, or city so skylines. the city skylines. <laughs> so um, there, those games will actually function on here via the touchpad, but you can also uh, connect either a USB C um, keyboard and mouse, Wi Fi, or you can actually, uh, if it's Bluetooth enabled, you can connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. They do actually say that on here that yeah. this will allow you to connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. That's fantastic. I wonder if they're going to require... I mean, it's this is me being nerdy, but I wonder if they're going to require any specific Bluetooth. You know, like, is it going to be 2.0? Does it have to be 3.0? Uh, well, it, the adapter is actually here. Hold on. Damn, they're really releasing everything. That that actually is sort of a good... It is Bluetooth 5.0, which means anything 5.0 below... 5.0 and below devices will be compatible to some degree. There's going to be some devices that probably won't because they're so damn old or very, like, fickle. No. But majority of Bluetooth devices will work. So I wonder how many people are going to complain about the resolution, which 1280 by 800, I mean, we're talking a much smaller screen. It is 16 by 10, which I had a 16 the by 10 monitor once. Do you know what the Switch's display screen is? I'm guessing 720. The Switch is 1280 by 720. Okay. Because so it's, it's just 16, 16 by, 9. by 9. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and really, if you look at your Switch, if you've played it, that screen looks good. Um, the 60 well, hertz refresh rate is a bit disappointing, but it's also understandable from the battery life perspective. Eh, I mean, if I'm playing... Dude, I am not looking to push doom eternal to 120 <laughs> frames on a handheld device <laughs> no i mean I, I may not be looking to push it to 120 frames but there there is sort of a there's a difference between the hertz and the frames per second so like you can have a 144 hertz monitor lock it to 60 frames and i guarantee you that if you really are pushing it, it's going to stay at a much better looking 60 frames per second than a monitor that is running at 60 hertz. It just depends on, on the rest of your setup, but if you have all the, the pieces right, you can really kind of make something beautiful. The big thing that the re refresh rate, I'm actually very happy that it's 60 hertz yeah. because that means it's going to have as much input latency as a typical gaming PC monitor would. And when I say typical PC gaming monitor, I don't mean the very expensive ones. I mean the ones that the mass or the yeah. vast majority of users have, like myself, that's just a normal ass monitor. Yeah. 
or maybe a TV. It's going to be just as good as your standard or what we would consider standard HD TV or monitor screen. Also, I doubt anybody is going to be competitively <laughs> playing on this thing. Like this is this is a uh, let's, let's so, be honest. So, it's a quality of life thing where we want to be a little bit lazier than we already are. It's, some it's asshole out there is going to bring that up as an argument where it's like you can't competitively play Rocket League. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Like. So yeah, just, that, all that is fun. good. Yeah. So uh, the point that I was making this morning about. Dr oh, hey, uh, your mic cut out, and it. I, it's also, because I look the other. I look. The other. <laughs> no, I was going to tell you the question I had earlier is answered now that I look at it. Dual band Wi-Fi, two and a half and five gig. So. Oh, you're right. Yay. Look at that. Yep, so it can haul ass, man. And the 80211 all frequencies, that's fantastic. Yeah. It, it's going to smoke, like, right through downloads, I guarantee you. So for, for people that don't understand why that's so good, the Wi-Fi that is available on your Switch is shit. Yeah. And this won't be. This The Wi-Fi that is enabled on this is on par with the PS5 and Xbox Series 1, or Series X. Yeah, keep in mind you can connect to five gigahertz on on the switch i believe but it it doesn't mean it performs like it yeah there's a lot more than that at um, at play there it, the switch has so, some of the worst downloading capability so the last big worry that i actually have for it is since we're talking about literal pc gaming hardware i'm really curious on how steam is going to handle driver support because AMD is not going to be the one pushing out driver updates to these things. It's going to be system updates through the Steam OS, which means Steam themselves, Valve themselves, are going to be the ones that have to deploy those updates. Believe it or not, I have faith in them there, just based on how often, you know, you'll load up Steam and it's like, hey, you gotta restart, because we had to hot fix <clears throat> something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that that really does cover it. That's the high points and low points, and a lot of the features that people aren't talking about. This thing is a fucking Beast. monster. I want one of these before I want a PS5. That's how excited I am. potential of this thing. Yeah, PS5. Like, uh, I still want one. Like, I want to play Demon Souls, even though I know the negatives. But yeah, in a lot of ways, this. Here's Baldur's Gate. Oh, Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, it just hit patch 5, by the way. Yes. They're making progress for all the people who are waiting for them to finish. They're this this <laughs> is going to be me in the break room at work, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even mad about it. No. There is at least here going to be playing a game worth a damn. Um, I don't know what the name of the game is, but it's basically DDR on a keyboard. Oh, no. And this kid was in the break room just playing the, sh the ever living shit out of that. And I was like, really, Doug? That sounds <laughs> terrible. That <laughs> sounds so bad. It's oh, like playing uh, rock band with a keyboard. Like, you don't. It, right. it, may, it may have been us, because I actually still play us. Oh, damn it. Nick, you always play the weird ones. He does. Man. Okay. He knows everything. So, one quick, big final question before we do the sign off and all that mm -hmm. um, Is it going to come with Half Life 3? Um. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it won't. Uh, and actually, just for mentioning that, yours is going to come with a gun that is fully compatible with your mouth. I know, right? Oh, oh no, Gabe, Gabe has, oh. has seriously put out there how much he hates that joke. Oh, so man. I do apologize, Gabe, um, to everybody else. Not sorry. But uh, yeah, no, I just I had to throw that in there. I, I One thing I do think is undervalued is uh i don't may, let's see if they took it down um this was okay they took it down because they uh they, they crashed their that, storefront right? <laughs> yeah well it crashed their storefront but they actually already sold out of pre-orders uh oh, yeah. yesterday when this opened up it was actually only five dollars to reserve oh, oh well that's why man a bunch of i guarantee you bots reserved every copy because unless Steam it, made you do it through your account well that's what the login's it, for now it it, it yeah. did it did make you do it through your account but there are tons of bots yeah, in true. Steam uh, as yes bots absolutely did buy them up 
but I still appreciate the motion mm -hmm. uh, because this is a big sell for a lot of people. And, it, you know, $5. Imagine if a PS5 had a $5 reservation fee. A lot of a lot more people would have tried to jump on it more than likely because mm -hmm. that's something that they can tangibly afford right now. And then yeah. they have until in this case, they have until quarter two of 2022 to pay the rest. You know, what would be hilarious, though, is if, like, say you ordered maybe like five or more like obviously you're not ordering it for your family yeah, is if in like instead they just mailed you a box of dicks <clears throat> oh Fantastic. uh if you if you care at all this is what the actual um the switch uh, the the, de yeah. the device under each of the joysticks look like I am so they're that shape and that they have that grip on the side because i've got the yeah. big sweaty finger thing going that sounds so gross well do you, <laughs> you notice how uh so it's going up and then flicking back to the zero point mm -hmm. so since this is all mechanical and not springs or any dumb bullshit like that uh it's it's all mechanical and no springs or rubber caps or rubber buttons or anything uh oh you're not hopefully drift. hopefully that will prevent uh, controller drift, yeah. Yeah, because I know uh, Sony just went through that. I know Xbox definitely went through that. I think all of them went through it at about the Switch same time. Switch is currently, well, I say currently, it's been having a problem since launch with uh, drifting Joy-Cons. Yeah, I mean, oh, they're, yeah, they're at like lawsuit level, though. I mean, and I think PS5, like their controllers were so fucked at first that they... My, my friend's, uh, he just bought a PS5 three months ago and his like already drifting that's insane that's way too fast um for those for for a system that costs that much and i know that they lost or broke even at best on the consoles like you still have to you know give us a quality controller like three months is just entirely I, unacceptable i wouldn't say they broke even because uh both consoles were a massive success oh yeah no don't be wrong they're they're sold out everywhere and the thing is uh, actual people are now getting their hands on it so they're gonna actually have games selling which is where the real money comes from i think they were just as unhappy in a lot of ways uh you know potentially down the road when it came to the when it came to those sales that uh, people were basically trying to resell them because those people are going to sit on them they're not going to buy games and that's you know kind of a crucial part of that business model right but yeah, I guess to close out this long conversation that I think was honestly entirely necessary because Holy people shit. aren't giving this the proper light. Uh, could this be a total disaster? Yeah, I mean, it, it totally. Uh, that's why I have one, because I have to see how this thing actually pans out. But oh, yeah. um, God, if I'm not excited, this is the most excited I've been for anything since the Switch. Yeah, you know what? I will... Uh... I'm not really even going to edit this. I'm going to throw it into a video. We're going to put a little music behind it and release it. Um, well, maybe not tonight, but you know, first thing whenever yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's also get some some voices from now our over 100 fans. Thank you guys. Yeah, um, exactly. What do you guys think about this stuff? Like, like, do you like the handheld idea? Do you hate that Steam is even trying to make hardware again? Let us know. I mean, hit us up. You know, we love hearing from you guys. Also, if you're someone that doesn't already own a PS5 or Xbox One, would you buy this instead? Because I sure would. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the final question for me, if you're because we've been making a lot of friends with Twitch streamers, if you're a streamer, does this thing even appeal to you or not? That's a darn good question. I, can this just stream? I, I, well, no, I can tell you right now it doesn't stream. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, with you know enough nerds anything is possible but like, well, i mean like i, I could it? i could stream this thing if i hooked it up to my genki shadow cast to exactly. my pc that is a gaming pc that also has access to all the games that are in that yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a little it's a little redundant at that point yeah i mean right and that's exactly. the reason why i ask is because i think the overwhelming majority will say no um, especially based on the games they play, you know, like Apex well, is I, really popular. You don't see that on Steam. I, I think as a streamer, it won't appeal to you. But if you are a streamer that travels or a streamer that, you Just know, has the off new stuff, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, it shows off new stuff or just wants this in their free time. I mean, streamers are gamers, man. Well, yeah. most of them are. We'll have to do an most... unboxing video uh, or a hot tub stream. Uh, I don't know that anybody wants to watch four tiny dragons drown in a hot tub. You haven't seen the hot tub, uh, hey, don't you hot tub channels on Twitch, have you? <laughs> right. <laughs> also, what are we going to use for a hot tub in this electronic store? Mm. Um, nothing. A right. giant coffee cup. It's hard enough no. for us to build like this one of those two bowl coffee cups. <laughs> oh no, it could work. Or like a cup ramen. We're tiny. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for everybody who's who's still here um, at this part of the video, and and we will absolutely see you soon. Uh, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Hello, night, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> we're out. Yeah, no, I totally want us to be in a cup of ramen now. Just like sit there and slurp noodles as we're sitting I there know, talking. I got to figure out how to do it, man, because I really oh, I do want to do that. Um, I think that would be hilarious. And Nick, well, well done, kind of just. My God, yeah. That was well, well done, dude. Not only that, but well done, like playing into that bit at the end. Like Chris and I talked about a joke of, of us. Like, cause we're gonna do the origin stories sort of part one for the hundred subs and then more as we go. And the idea is that we eventually kind of uh, post up or squat in basically like an electronics boutique. And we come out at night to watch videos and play the games that are on display. Um, yeah. And then we were talking just, I just briefly mentioned to Chris the idea. We had a producer, a nameless producer that we would yell at named Jeff. I mean, it doesn't have to be that name um, originally with this show, but I was thinking it would be kind of hilarious if we left almost abusive messages <laughs> written out to like the store manager about like new games that he needs to switch to snacks like we want a hot dog roller or some ridiculous shit like that. It doesn't yeah. have to be all the time, but it could be a running joke that we do start um, start doing it eventually. And oh, God, I got to stop this recording or this.